What's up, everybody? So, yeah, like I thought, this thing is still going hard. Everybody's found their new truth. Amen. Praise to Taria. A bunch of I knew it's out there. And, of course, if you ask any questions and don't just blindly believe in this week's discovery of the millennium, then you're controlled up. So we're going to look at the source of all this information, how it came to be on the Internet, how synthetic aperture radar actually works, and I'm going to show you the difference between an actual scientific paper on things like this and what this was. So a couple of good comments before I address the bad one. Uh, thanks, Derek and Big J Halliday. Stripper Coin says, thank you. Been screaming about this. Yeah, Adam, it's best to take everything on the Internet with a grain of salt. And Shogun Bear, here's some colorful squiggly lines. Trust us, this is what it means. Now, had they not said that these were hollow with a spiral staircase going down, it might not have got my attention quite so much. But translating the squiggly lines on the left into what you see on the right needs some explanation, as well as how you got a side view of these columns two kilometers down under the ground. They also said that they're sitting on top of these square boxes, which don't show up in the scan. This would all be squared off right here if that were the case. Also, this is two square boxes side by side forming a triangle. So how exactly does that lay out underneath the pyramids? Or is it just under one of them? See, I got a lot of questions about this. But anytime I dare to question the divine wisdom of the Internet, I get this. Static just ends up being controlled up. Anything that's not mainstream and agreed upon, he just goes full scale shill for the norm. Writing off something that you don't have the math skills to understand immediately shows your true colors. Go back to construction and leave the maths to math people. Actually, I thought last video that I did show that I understand this, but I see I didn't break it down to where you understand it. I can see you already figured out everything in the world and there's nothing left to do but play some Call of Duty. <laughs> but as long as you're a rational person, I can even break this down to where you'll understand it. But what I can't do is fix a demoralized truther. Not saying you are one, I just, I never know who I'm dealing with here. And by demoralized, I don't mean feeling a bit sullen today. I mean, somebody's so caught up in the YouTube Kool-Aid that it doesn't matter how many facts you present, they're just going to stick to whatever version that they subscribe to. And I hate to break it to anybody, but the whole, they couldn't have built that industry is a multi-million dollar industry. There's big money in these books and YouTube videos getting a million views over this. And sorry, but there's a lot of grifters in this game. Like Christopher Dunn, he was one of the originals, an author from way back in the day. He goes into the sarcophagus at the Serapium, says how it's just laser precision advanced machining technology. And then other people go visit the exact same box and show that he just completely lied about that. I mean, that's a quarter inch over 12 inches right there. So that's an inch out of square over four feet. You want me to go back to construction? Okay, let's do that. You know, construction is nothing but math, right? Why do you think the square and compass is a symbol of a certain fraternity? But sorry, I know there's a million videos and buku bucks and saying this is laser precision, but it's not. You can see that the back line of this lid is about two inches off plane with the front. I spot things like this from a mile away, but I got a straight line there so everybody can see it. And if you go parallel with the front line on this, you got that. But I've just heard too much BS about ancient Egypt that when I look into it, it doesn't match up. So extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And hey, they could come through with this extraordinary evidence, and I'll say great job, but right now I'm skeptical. So who wrote this paper? How did it come to be on the internet? Now, as far as I can tell, Filippo Biondi is a legitimate scientist in synthetic aperture radar. So they got one point going for him there. Then the other author of the paper, Corrado Malanga, is a ufologist, basically. He's got all of these... Alien and Demon books in Italian. Uh, this translates to UFO of the mind. He's on podcasts with the whole pyramid alien thing. And you know what? If you bring the evidence, that's fine. I don't care who you are. But I'm just letting everybody know who the authors of this paper are. I just found this. Uh, they did do a press conference, evidently. This one's translated into English, so I'll give that a watch later. I watched about 10 seconds of it, and it's a pretty brutal automated voice. But I'll give it a try. So that's who wrote it. This is how it came to be on the internet. This past weekend in Italy. Mm -hmm. And so this is 
Gerardo Malango, Filippo Biondi, and Armando May um, are all doing this project. And they're friends of mine. I've been talking with them since last year about trying to help get this discovery out. They told me last year, get ready, Trevor, because March 15th, the world's going to see. So I've been preparing for this day. But what actually happened on the day was, was very surprising to me. Um, and it turns out that I ended up being the source for this entire document coming out. Um, <clears throat> it was actually like, they sent me this this document on by email on Saturday morning. And so I woke up and saw it and I said, okay, wow. <laughs> I was the first person to read it. And um, I, I, I imagined that this was being given to every one of the 900 plus attendees at the conference yeah. who would all be sharing it that day. So I asked Armando May, I said, can I share this? And he said, go for it. And I put it out figuring 900 other people would also, but as it turned out, um, I was the only one. I put it on Facebook. It wasn't any official web page of theirs that it was released on. Yep. Um, so a lot of people are looking for the source and it's really just my Facebook page. Um, so I want to explain how that came about a little bit and give yeah. people an idea that. Oh yeah, this came from one guy's Facebook page and just went everywhere. There's all these videos of question everything, all history's a lie, but don't question it when somebody comes out with an extraordinary claim like this. And you could tell he was really nervous when he said, well, it came from my Facebook page. Being the source for this entire document coming out. Um, <clears throat> a little nervous about it, but he doesn't understand this game yet. He just hit the jackpot. He went from 3,000 to 9,000 subs overnight, and it doesn't matter if you're right or not in this game. <laughs> I showed a month or so ago about the guy claiming that there's going to be this huge disclosure come out, and that never happened. It doesn't matter. And I'm not saying anything bad about him here. He just put out some info. So congratulations, you're going to bypass my channel in a month. Because people like this won't take the time to try to understand what is being presented, and then they assume that nobody can understand this stuff. And if you claim you do, then you're a controlled op. So let me show you an actual paper on synthetic aperture radar and how it works. And then I'll show you the difference between that and what they presented. First off, all this data is probably coming from planes or balloons because you can't get this kind of data over in China and Russia where it's a no-fly zone for Americans. Just saying, look at the resolution on Google Maps. But look, I read these scientific papers quite a bit. Some of them take a little time to understand, especially medical ones, but you can usually suss it out. So here's how this technology works and what it's capable of. Figure six shows different two beam scanning patterns between the four squint, that's the area it's scanning in front of it, and the aft squint, the area it's scanning behind it, which both shift from the nadir point. Now I had to look that up. Sometimes you gotta do that, but the nadir point is just the point directly below it. In the four squint mode, the beam steering direction aligns with the flight path. That's just saying it's recording what's directly in front of it, while in the aft squint mode, it orients opposite to that. So it's recording what's directly behind it. The obliquely oriented imaging area with respect to the satellite NIDIR track enables an increased swath width and extended mapping coverage. So if you're shooting a beam straight down, that swath width is going to be narrower than if it is obliquely scanning the areas out in front or in the rear of it. The further you're shooting that beam, the wider the swath is gonna be. That's all that says. Here they're explaining how they shoot a signal out and then they basically time how long it takes to get back. Or if it doesn't come back at all, then they know it's a flat surface and it ricocheted off in the other direction. Figure A, a flat surface such as water makes the water wave reflect forward without any reflection back. B, the forest and vegetation generates multiple signal reflections, but highly attenuated due to the penetration in the trees. The inclination of mountains generates direct reflections back to the sensor. So it's just radar imaging. It's something that's been around since World War II. It shoots out a signal, it bounces off something, or it doesn't, and you can interpret the data after that. And I can take you through this whole paper and make all of it make sense. But what these guys are claiming here is they have some fancy proprietary data analysis software that they're using publicly available data and seeing two kilometers into the ground with it. We don't have anything that's going to penetrate anything close to that. You ever heard of muon detectors? They put these way deep down into the ground because muons are the only thing, cosmic particles, that have enough energy to penetrate that deep into the ground. 
So these guys are claiming to take the same data that everybody else has access to and are able to use it to see two kilometers into the ground. If that's the case, they're going to be getting a knock on the door from the government real soon. So let me take all of the superfluous words out of this and tell you what they're claiming here. The physical principle we use is that of estimating the vibrations captured by the Khufu pyramid during the observation time interval. So they're measuring the vibration of the pyramid. The vibrational energy is generated from many sources such as wind or even the movement of people nearby in Cairo. This vibrational measurement is taken by evaluating the Doppler centroid anomalies. So the Doppler effect can be used to track objects in motion. If it's moving towards you, then the wavelength is going to come back faster, higher frequency, like a police car's higher pitched as it's coming by you. And then as it goes by, it goes, nah, 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 nah. yeah, just like that. And they're known to use this technology for tracking ships out at sea. But now they're claiming to use this to measure the frequency of the pyramid and then extrapolate all this data from that. So everything does naturally vibrate at its own frequency. But they're saying that they can measure the vibrational frequency of a building through Doppler. This is measured in hertz. That's how many times it vibrates back and forth in one second. And we're talking about a imperceptibly small amount of vibration. I mean, if you look at a rock, it looks like it's just sitting there as a rock. But down at the molecular level, yeah, it's vibrating. So this tiny little bit right here is the shift. That's indicating that it's vibrated one micron to the right. <laughs> and you're telling me you measured that tiny little movement through Doppler from space. Sorry, but that would take like a laser focused beam to get that fine of a measurement. The wavelength of a Doppler radar is about three millimeters to 30 centimeters. So it can't detect anything under three centimeters. A weather radar doesn't pick up a single drop of rain. It takes quite a bit of rain before it starts having enough mass before it starts reflecting the signal back to the sensor. Now, the resonant frequency of sandstone, which is mainly what the pyramid is built of, is 8,700 hertz. So it's vibrating back and forth microscopically 8,700 times per second. So they're taking the same data that everybody else has, but they're able to get it down to this pinpoint accuracy. And then not only be able to measure that vibration, but be able to use that to calculate that it's going two kilometers down into the ground. I tell you what, if I had this technology, the pyramid would not be the first thing that I'd go after. I would set this thing at 8.563 megahertz and go find me a nice gold stash to finance all my other projects. But they're not even the ones with the equipment taking these measurements. They're just evaluating data that somebody else has produced. So I don't have to be a physicist and read their entire paper to question what they've got going here because I understand the technology that they're claiming that they're using. It bounces a signal off of the surface of things. It doesn't penetrate down into the ground. And I would make a rather sizable bet that they're not able to use this to measure the resonant frequency of anything. The wavelength of the signal that they're sending out is three centimeters at its finest. And the length of the vibration for a solid object, I couldn't even find. It's so small. Yeah, crystals vibrate at 32,768 times per second, but it's only moving back and forth like one or two microns at a time, and you're not going to detect that with a huge three-centimeter wave. LiDAR is actually a much better technology for penetrating into things. It can at least get down into the trees or through the trees as to where synthetic aperture radar on the left. We're back to the interference pattern that trees cause. That's why LiDAR has discovered all of these new civilizations all throughout Mexico and everywhere else, because it can penetrate through the vegetation where nothing else can. So I can tell you one thing for a fact. They're not bouncing any signal down two kilometers into the ground to take this measurement with. They're claiming that the tiny microscopic vibration of that pyramid up above is betraying all this that's below. So I find that hard to believe. I'm waiting for more information on that. If that makes me a shill, so be it. But now, do you understand what's being claimed here? Because I do. And I love how it's question everything, but unless you like it. <laughs> Here, let's put this into construction terms. This is like me saying I can drive a nail in the wall and due to the vibration of the wind blowing by the house and the cars driving by on the street, that I can measure that nail 
And by the vibration of that nail, I can lay out the entire house. I don't have to see the rest of the house. I can just measure what's going on with that nail, and it is portraying everything that's connected to that nail that is out of sight of what I'm observing. That's what that's claiming. And you know what? They may have done it. I don't know. But it's not tracking with the known capabilities of this technology by anyone else. Otherwise, they would be using it for all kinds of things. And the government would swoop in really quick and declare the Invention Secrecy Act of 1951 because they don't like the public having toys that they don't have. So you're saying you can take publicly available data and map out all of the secret rooms and tunnels underneath the White House? If that's the case, then they're going to be getting a visit from an agency really soon. There's no way you could let that fall into the hands of other countries. So these are just some of the things I think of when I hear things like this, and I'm going to be really impressed if it's true. Why didn't this pick up all the tunnels that people have independently observed there? I mean, the whole Giza Plateau is a spider web of tunnels, but didn't hear anything about that, and we went two kilometers deep. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got to get down to the lodge and get my YouTube shill badge for the most shadow banned channel because that's how we roll. We like to lie to 10,000 people at a time instead of 500,000 like other channels. We like it up close and personal. <laughs> but hey, to all you guys that were able to find this channel, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for supporting me here. Most of you guys rock, but I do try to explain things where people in the back of the class can understand. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next one. Static out.